Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today I'd like to share with you a few scriptures that I was meditating on. And for the past few days, I've been going over this. And I was given to share as well. In the morning when I woke up, I usually meditate on my bed. And after I would pray, I start to meditate on what Abba is going to do throughout the day for me. And after I prayed, I was shown a vision of two people both together in the journey of life. Only one was living life and was in a smaller height or stature. And the other was a little more taller in stature and also was living his life. The Lord then started to show me about how we are growing in our journey of life. One is walking in the flesh, that is the smaller stature, and the other is walking in the spirit. This is how it was demonstrated to me so I can understand the vision messages, okay? Now, when we walk in the spirit, we are also living in the spirit and we are growing in stature. I was then reminded of the scripture of two passages as I was shown to distant people. And that would be Matthew 6, 25 and 27. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? So we see two questions here. It's not life more than food. So I then began to meditate. And as I was meditating on this question, the spirit gives life is what I heard. The flesh brings forth death. Also, I was shown the representation of the food in the physical, that which we consume in the physical body. But the food can also be tied to spiritual food, which is living by the word. The spirit man feeds on, on the word of Yah to live out in our lives. Now verse 27. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Then I was starting to meditate on this question, and this is what I was shown. Becoming mature in Yahushua Messiah is by his spirit, which he has sent to us as the helper to walk in our lives. The remaining life that we have, we will live out walking in the spirit, his spirit. Matthew 6.33 But seek you first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So what will be added to us is in stature for growth. This is spiritual food, what we eat and drink in our lives. Live in water as well which is part two, um, reflecting what we will be drinking, that we need to sustain in order to have spiritual growth. Also, that we need to have garments, which is the clothing that he was speaking about, not to worry about our clothes, okay? So in this sense, he was having me meditate on the spiritual garment that we will receive from the one who clothes all his creations. 
All which Yahushua Messiah is the one who gives us these things freely. Who also said, if any one hungers or thirsts, let him come after me. And who also says, as we see in Revelation 3, 18. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. I was then led for daily bread. 1 Peter 4 and in chapter 4 but the end of all things is at hand therefore be serious and watchful in your prayer and above all things have fervent love for one another for love will cover a multitude of sins be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Yah. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracle of Yah. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which Yah supplies and that we know is each one is given a measure of faith and grace that in all things Yah may be glorified through Yahushua Messiah to whom belongs the glory and the dominion forever and ever amen also I started to notice what I was sharing with my husband the night before we usually would sit down on our gazebo area and we will meditate on the things that we were shown for the day and what we can take from it, what we um, think is learning for us, beneficial for our growth as well. And so we can be refreshed for the new day. I was speaking to him the meditation of my heart out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak as in Psalms 1914 let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight O Lord my rock and my redeemer I noticed that what was in the soil of my heart was being spoken out of my mouth that is what I was sharing with my husband last night. Speaking about all these things I was meditating on at the end of our day. What was on my mind which had been set on the things above. I shared with him the journey is with persecution and trials that we are facing every day as his children called by faith. But we are being tested by Abba of three things, the mind, the heart, and the spirit. I explain how it is very interesting to me that he is not testing the body, whether I am fit by not being overweight or phys my physical medical condition, which I'm dealing with. And how only the priests, as I observe in his scripture, where they were dressed in sacred garments to be able to come and minister to the Lord in his temple. Yet I have no priestly attire, but in a sense, I see my mediator, my high priest, is making intercession on my behalf, Yahushua, the Messiah. So this morning, after I was in prayer, before I gotten out of bed, this is what I was shown. The vision of two people being in different statures. 
I will further explain that it was demonstrated this way to me and it was being shown about the clothing, how we are clothed by the Father as well as everyone who are going on the journey of life with him. First Peter 4 was given for daily bread. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though something strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of Yah rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a busy body in other people matters or affairs. Yet if anyone suffer as a Christian believer, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify Yah in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of Yah. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of Yah? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of Yah commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. This is clearly showing conducts and behavior as I meditate on as murderer, a thief, and evildoer. Instead, this is how we live at peace with all men as much as it depends on us. As it was demonstrated to me, I will also demonstrate it to you. The peace is the dove representing the Holy Spirit. Walking and living in the Spirit is how we are called to live. Also, Yahushua gave us two commandments to hang on the law of Moses. If we are to hang the two commandments on the law of Moses, this obviously shows to us that he did not come as he stated by his own mouth. He did not come to abolish the law, nor the prophets, but to fulfill. So Yahushua gave us two new commandments that we should hang on the law of Moses and you will fulfill it, he says. So how do we fulfill it? We can take a look at this, which is by the Holy Spirit, because the law is spirit as well. The law is a lamp, the law is good, the law is also spirit. So the law points to us, our conducts and behaviors as children of God, okay? How we are to conduct our stay while we are sojourning to our new home. The first and greatest, love the Lord your Yah with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. The second, love your neighbor as yourself. Love covers a multitude of sins. The word cover, I was shown, is to protect us from a multitude of sin. It also protects us from the evil one who is the father of sin. So the love is Yah's love. If we love Yah and our neighbor because of his love, which is the fruit of the Spirit, we will not sin against him and our neighbor as to commit murder, steal, 
and be evildoers against him and their neighbor. As an evildoer breaking the Father's commandments and blaspheming against his name, but instead bringing glory to his name by receiving his word with meekness, it, it is being implanted in our hearts, which is soil. And it's also being rooted and grounded in our hearts that we ourselves may be rooted and grounded in his words. When I was looking at the root, he had me observe the root system being a person who gardens. The root system is like the mind of the plant. If you don't have a good root system, the plant develop and growth will be affected. So when I look at the root system, it reminds me of the mind of Yah. He is the root system to put on his mind. We are to put on the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is the mind of the Father also. So that we may be faithful, which is also a fruit of the Spirit. Gentleness, which is tied to mercy and graciousness. Being long-suffering with those who have transgressed against us as well as Yah. So this is tied to Yah's love as he loves the whole world. He sent his only begotten son so that he will die for all who will receive him. So we see the love demonstrating, demonstrated to us in this when he laid his life down for his friend. We also see it demonstrating to us that love is also the first fruit of the Spirit. Okay, that's listed. Without love, certain things cannot follow. Okay? So this is why he is long-suffering towards us. Not that he's lacking, but his will is that none shall perish and all should come to repentance. This is showing the testing of our mind, heart, and the spirit, which is what Yah tests us. And he does not judge by the appearance of man. This is how man judge by appearance. But Abba does not test that way, nor judge that way. This is how we can see his glory resting on us, the characteristic of our Messiah, Yahushua, which if we see him, we will see the Father also. His Son is full of the Father's glory, which rests on him. This is what I was being shown, as the glory of our Father rests on us, which is what he is clothing us with as we are growing in stature. I was then led to Proverbs 8, the excellence of wisdom. And it reads, Does not wisdom cries out and understanding lift up her voice? She takes her stand on the top of the hill beside the way where the paths meet. She cries out by the gates at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. To you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O you simple ones, understand prudence, and you fools be of an understanding heart. Listen, for I will speak of excellent things, and from the opening of my lips will come right things. For my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination 
to my lips. I also was being reminded to not overlook an area, and it was this area. As I was reminded of the scripture, they are seven abominations the Lord hates. Just as unclean foods are abominations, so are other abominations he hates, including the abomination of desolation in a singular form. So let's continue in Proverbs. And this is why he was having me meditate on that for a little bit. All the words of my mouth are with righteousness, nothing crooked. And this can also tie to evil speaking against brethren and elders, but also regarding each one another's walk in their lives. And this was demonstrated to me in the Old Testament of the account of Marian and Aaron speaking against Moses, their brother. But mainly Marian had a voice of her opinions, which was um, coming out of her heart concerning Moses and his wife. So let's move forward that we can see this in Proverbs. Okay. And this is tied to crooked. Nothing corrupt or perverse is in them. They are all plain to him who understands and write to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than gold, choice gold. And knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. I wisdom dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge and discretion. I think we need to pay attention to this. When I first came in my journey, and I started to come out from the buildings. I started to seek knowledge. But then I had to stop and think, what, what is the purpose that I'm seeking knowledge for? Is it just to have knowledge, to be puffed up with knowledge? Or am I seeking knowledge to have understanding so that I can apply it to my life? And if I am applying it to my life, in my walk, walking in a newness of life in the spirit as I'm called now it's going to be able to give me discernment and discretion of how I deal with things in life okay and this is not just concerning things that are spiritual but also the things in the physical okay so I'm reminded of this. So I just wanted to share that with you so that you can have a little understanding of why it's important to not overlook this as um, wisdom is crying out. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. When you hate something, it becomes an abomination to you, okay? Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom I am understanding. I have strength and by me kings reign and rulers decree justice. And when I read this, it kind of encouraged me because we're, as we are sojourning this life, this is not it. There is a temporary stage that we're at and we're entering into that eternal life in a walk. But we are also going to inherit positions which are in the terms of rulers who will bring justice because we reign along with Yahushua, who is the Messiah, we're being joint heirs along with him 
in the relationship that we have also as the brethren that this is part of an inheritance that we receive that is given by him to us let's move forward by me princes rule and nobles all the judges of the earth i love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me riches and honor are with me enduring riches and righteousness and when i looked at the word enduring riches this riches is the heavenly riches okay and it's everlasting it doesn't melt away my fruit is better than gold yes than fine gold and my revenue than choice silver i traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice that i may cause those who love me to inherit wealth that i may fill their treasuries the lord possess me at the beginning of his way before his works of old i have been established from everlasting from the beginning before there was ever an earth when there was no depths i was brought forth when there were no fountains abounding with water before the mountains were set before the hills i was brought forth while as yet he has not made the earth or the fields or primal dust of the world when he prepared the heavens i was there when he drew a circle on the face of the deep when he established the clouds above when he strengthened the fountains of the deep when he assigned the sea its limits so that the water would not transgress his command when he marked out the foundations of the earth then i was beside him as a master craftsman and it's very interesting because when i was reading this i was dead begin to meditate on what job questions was asked by yah to job okay when he was going through his suffering okay these were the same question that he asked job answer me and these things that wisdom is actually speaking of is these things were you there job were you there when i assigned the seas its limit it's so beautiful when you look at his word and praise yah it's so awesome now wisdom said she was there and i was daily his delight rejoicing always before him rejoicing in his inhabited way and my delight was with the sons of men now therefore listen to me my children for blessed are those who keep my ways hear instruction and be wise and do not disdain it but he who sins against me wrongs his own soul all those who hate me love death what stuck out to me was blessed is the man who listens to me watching daily at my gate waiting at the post of my doors for whoever finds me finds life and obtain favor from the lord as i heard in the morning after praying i heard pray without ceasing and in my daily bread reading i noticed it reminded me of this it reminded me of watching daily at the gates which is tied to seeking the kingdom of yah first 
and waiting at the post of my door, which reminds me of his righteousness, who is Yahushua. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added. As Yeshua had reminded us in his word, where he says, the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but the kingdom of God is about righteousness and judgment. Okay? So this reminds me of waiting as at the post of my door and his righteousness who is Yeshua the Messiah and everything else will be added. So laying up our treasures in heaven because wherever our treasure is, there our hearts will also be. So in 1 Peter 4, it says, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Where is our prayers offered up? It's before the altar in heaven, which Yahushua, our Messiah, our high priest, offers up and built up in the censer, filled with smoke, in the temple of Yah. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover multitude of sins. Love will cover a multitude of sins. So he loves us by the intercessions on our behalf that he makes for us, okay? And we do so as well for one another. In Revelation, it is described the smoke is the glory of Yah that is in the temple. Now consider our prayers as it is taken and put in the censer and it is filled with smoke. Okay? Which is reference to the glory of Yah. And how it describes that the glory of Yah rests on us. It just gives an insight of how marvelous are the works of his hands. Just as David described how the heavens declare the glory of Yah and all its creation. I hope as I was encouraged, as it was given to me, I gladly share the goodness of Yah with all my brethren. We are all in the journey of life, leading on two paths. One being broad, and it leads to destruction, and another lead being the narrow way, one leading to life. I pray that we would always choose life. And Yah bless you, brothers and sisters.